what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so you're probably wondering why my shirt looks like this man i just woke up from a nap uh had to wake up extra early had to run some errands before i linked up with dub and trill billy for the crown jewel aka crown royal live stream if you guys missed it go check it out on dub and nisha's channel that's where we watched the live stream reaction shout out to everyone that was there we had a great time it was fun so i didn't get much rest so i'm literally just waking up i had to give me some rest when i got home just waking up so i was like you know what? i'm not trying to go i ain't gonna fix myself i'm kicking it with you guys you guys are like my family so yeah this is why my shirt looks like this but we got to talk about crown jewel not gonna lie to you um this was the best crown jewel we've had so far and i have enjoyed this was the better one for sure um this show had enough build it had enough time for stories to be built the previous crown jewels they usually are like two weeks after another pay-per-view so it's not really much time to build stories but this one they had enough time to build some stories and um i was enjoying it i enjoyed uh, this crown jewel the best one so far out of all the ones they've done now I'm not gonna go into in you know in depth like I used to with my thoughts and opinion videos uh, mainly because you guys you know we be in the live stream so you kind of already know my thoughts and opinions but I want to do a little recap for those who didn't watch the live stream so I'm not gonna go into each and every match I'm gonna talk about some noticeable things from uh, certain matches and uh, give my thoughts and opinions on where the show could go on Raw and SmackDown which storylines could cultivate so first things first we gotta talk about for me the match of the night which I figured it was gonna be for me Edge versus Seth Rollins Hell in a Cell match fantastic on stream me and Dub we was watching it at the time Billy was on his way best match of the night we I literally was losing my voice at the beginning of the show because the match was so good and you want to know why the match was good is because the story invested the storyline that was created between Seth and Edge was great and it, it called for it WWE this is how you book a Hell in a Cell Hell in a Cell should not even be a pay-per-view that's one. Hell in a Cell should not be a pay-per-view. It should only be a match to end a feud, to settle a serious personal feud. That's how it's always been, and that's how it should be. And here's another thing. You don't need a whole bunch of blood to sell that match. We know back in the day, that's what it was used. You, you knew someone was going to bleed to make the match more intense. You don't need that here. If you don't want to do that since we are still in the PG uh, era of rating TV ratings you don't need that all you need is a good storyline that's it if your storyline is good we're gonna get invested people wanted to see Edge get his revenge on Seth Rollins for coming to his house opening up his fridge and drinking his orange juice Edge was avenged I mean that orange juice was avenged because you don't go to another man's house and drink that dang orange juice Straight out the bottle, Seth, evil, and then took a bite out of an apple and threw it. The disrespect in another man's house, you knew it was getting personal. Hell in a Cell was perfect. This match was great. Storytelling was great. Edge is selling the injuries, you know, to his head and neck area. This actually became a TLC within Hell in a Cell. It's so fitting because we all know Edge is great when it comes to table ladders and chairs and this was great the the seth putting the chain around his foot and super kicking edge in the face i thought the match was over edge kicking out had me going crazy and obviously poetic justice at its finest edge putting him in his submission move and having the the, the wrench in his mouth then finally placing about to you know finish him off edge uh seth rollins is his head is over uh the 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 uh his head's laying down on a steel chair edge hits seth rollins finishing move onto 
uh, Seth Rollins onto the steel chair. Poetic. He got beat by his own finishing move. Loved it. This match was great. They had the pyro. I'm looking forward to what he does on Raw. It looked like this was going to be his last match, the way he was all emotional and the way they were selling it and the pyro and everything. I'm thinking this is going to be his last match. But he is going to Monday Night Raw, and I am looking forward to whoever he feuds with because there's no denying Edge is doing some of the best work he has ever done in his career. Fantastic, man. That match was great, 10 out of 10. And here's the thing that WWE kind of, in my opinion, they messed themselves up just a little bit. I don't think I would have put that match on first, even though it works. It's just, it's hard for everyone else to live up to that match. Granted, most of these matches, outside of one, but most of these matches were solid matches. Not, nothing less than like a six, six and up. You know what I'm saying? They were solid, decent, enjoyable matches. But nothing was really going to top that match for a while. Maybe until you got to the Roman and Brock Lesnar match. But that was a fantastic match. Love that. I would have probably put that somewhere in the middle of the card. Wouldn't have put it at the beginning. Because, you know, you would have just had a lot of people trying to live up to that. That I don't think it was going to happen. But still, overall, best Hell in a Cell we've had in quite some time. Best match of the night, in my personal opinion. So I want to know if y'all enjoyed that match as well. Was that your favorite match of the night? Because it was for me. All right. So let's get into uh, a noticeable low point. But before we do that, I just have to say the crowd in Saudi Arabia, bro, they were lit. They were lit even for matches, low points that they shouldn't have been lit for. They were super lit. I enjoy crowds like that because it livens up the show. So y'all did y'all thing out there. Y'all was turned up. Y'all was happy to be there. We was happy to watch y'all be entertained. So that was pretty cool. But a low point for the show for me, obviously, was the Queens tournament. I predicted Zelina Vega was going to win. I knew that's what it was going to happen because they had been pushing her. And the match, to me, it was not that enjoyable. I gave it a 3 out of 10. I didn't really care for it. Um, I I was really hoping Shayna Baszler was going to be one of the finalists in the match. Um, but she wasn't. And that kind of sucks because I do think that she should have been in that match. And she should have won it. That's my opinion. And really give her a nice push. Zelina Vega's cool. But I don't see where this is going to go unless they're going to push her to potentially have a title opportunity, a title shot, you know, then maybe. But even then, I don't I don't see her as a Raw or SmackDown's women's champion. Not right now. I just don't see it viable. So I think if anybody deserves it, it's Shayna Baszler. She definitely deserves that push. But she wasn't even in the finals, so... I really didn't care too much about this match, but I just wasn't that enjoyable for me. That was a low point of the pay-per-view for me. A surprising high point, which I expected it to be, was Goldberg, a.k.a. Oldberg, and Bobby Lashley. That was great. That, that was a great, great match. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I was enjoying the, the promos leading up to it. Goldberg was pretty much like, yo, bro, you put your hands on my son. I'm going to fucking murder you. Simple as that. I was enjoying this. Bobby Lashley, brutal, beating the hell out of Goldberg, already using chains before the match even started. Like, he already had the chain wrapped around his fist. Goldberg didn't know he was going in. I enjoyed this, man. This was fun. This is how a Goldberg match should be. Just brutal carnage. Quick, straight to the point. And I knew Goldberg was going to win, obviously, because... um. The way they set the story up, son got touched by Bobby Lashley, like got, you know, uh, he got assaulted by Bobby Lashley. So you knew it only made sense for him to win. I like the last spot. The last spot was super, super dope, bro. Him, Goldberg, spearing Bobby Lashley off the ramp. I didn't even realize the ramp was that high. Spearing him through three tables and the, the pin just defiant just you know just victorious pin like i i told you i was gonna do this this is just what it is you know what i'm saying i, I did my job i loved it this was great 
enjoyed this match. I gave this match an 8 out of 10. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, and we'll go from here. I'm not sure if Goldberg feuds with anybody else. Uh, I don't know where you take Bobby Lashley, but he's still, he's still relatively strong. I mean, dude did put his hand on his child, and he did get speared off a high ramp through three tables. So, dude still looks pretty strong, in my opinion. He's not buried or anything like that, but very enjoyable match. WWE Championship match, it was decent, but it picked up at the end. I love what they did. They showed Big E kicking out of the claymore kicking out of the claymore and then ultimately getting the upper hand and beating uh beating drew mcintyre i thought drew was gonna turn heel but he didn't it was an enjoyable match it picked up i like that the right person won thank you wwe for not messing this up xavier woods winning king of the ring i was okay with it some people wanted finn balor to win understandably but i was okay with this the only thing that needs to happen here is where do they take them he needs to get pushed he needs to get pushed in some type of title opportunity or something he needs to be pushed to the upper card if you're gonna if that's the only way this tournament makes sense you don't book him to win this and then it's just a fake crown and a fake scepter no it needs something needs to be noticeably different about xavier and the feuds that he ends up in needs to be revolving around some singles championship. That's I'm going to leave it at that, man. But the match they had, fantastic, enjoyable match. I gave that like a 7 out of 10. It was an enjoyable match for me. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Women's triple threat match. This was out of all the matches that I predict. I predicted every single match, the outcome for every single. Well, no, I take that back. There's two matches I did not predict right. The Mansoor and Ali match, I predicted Ali was going to win. The Mansoor ended up getting the victory in this match right here. I predicted Sasha Banks was going to win this match. But no, Becky Lynch got the win. She got the sneaky pin. She got the roll up, holding the ropes. She cheated, but she got the win. I was surprised. And this was a very good women's match. It showed all their talent. Bianca Belair is amazing in the ring. We're in incredibly strong i hope she gets some type of title opportunity again wins the title and actually holds it for a while i would love for her to be the raw women's champion and actually hold the title and actually fight some people i mean she held it for a while but i don't want her to lose to somebody in 20 seconds no she needs to be a strong dominant champion for as long as possible depending on how they book it so but nah, she, everyone showed out. It was an enjoyable match. I gave that match like a 7 out of 10. It was enjoyable for me. I was just surprised on the booking decision, having Becky win. But I know SmackDown is tomorrow. I'm filming this uh, Thursday night. So it is Friday. Friday will be, you know, Smack. they're going back for SmackDown for Friday. So I don't know if she's going to drop the belt there. Is she going to take the belt with her to Raw? Because she's supposed to be drafted to Raw. I don't know, but Becky Lynch still is the SmackDown's women's champion. So that was cool. And, yo, we got to get into the main event. If you watched the live stream, if you saw the live stream, you saw how hyped Dub was to have Roman Reigns retain his Universal Championship. Match was great. I love this match. Hard hitting. I figured this match was going to be good. This was definitely... Uh, I gave this match an 8 out of 10 only because of the ending. I know Dub, he didn't care how Roman won. He just wanted Roman to win. I I could see some people visibly disappointed in the ending or how it ended. And I talked about this on why Roman must win and how I wanted him to win. And we're going to get into that now. The, everything else leading up to the match, storyline, promos, the match itself, great. Roman knowing Brock very well, been to Suplex City many times, doing all he can to pretty much make sure he doesn't go to Suplex City. I was enjoying this. Referee gets knocked down. When the referee got knocked down by an F5 attempt, I knew. Well, when he hit the F5, I knew there was going to be some shenanigans. I knew then. I was like, oh. Oh, there's definitely about to be some shenanigans. Roman's definitely about to probably get his his uh, cousins involved. Then Paul Heyman, he threw the belt. He threw the belt in or whatnot in between them. And the thing is, they were fighting over the belt. Then all of a sudden, the Usos come in. Boom, super kick. 
Roman uh, hits him with the spear. One, two, three. Boom. It was over. In and out. Enjoyable match. Yes, Roman is a heel, but I really think they missed the opportunity here to have Roman beat him clean. But I get why they didn't do it. The reason why they didn't do it, this is not over. I'm telling you this now. This is not over between Brock and Roman. It's not. This is not over. The thing is, Paul Heyman threw the belt. And some people are speculating that Paul Heyman actually wanted Brock to, to pick up the belt and use it. But he wasn't able to get control over it. Some people were speculating that as we was as the stream was in it. And that is a good storyline. So the storyline can still go that Paul Heyman still may not truly be with Roman here. Because this is not over. I do think they're going to have another rematch. I don't know when. But I do believe they're going to have another rematch. I wouldn't be surprised because this match was good. And they worked well together in the ring. I'm okay with them having one more rematch. It just, if they are going to have it, Brock, ha uh, Roman has to win clean. That's all that I want, but I don't know where they're taking the story here. But in this sense, he did win in heel-like fashion, and a lot of people were disappointed in that, and I understand. But if they do that, and Brock Roman wins and beats Brock clean, there's really no room for an another match because it's like, what's the point of having another match? You beat the guy clean. Who's next? That's that's really what's it. That's the only option. We go on to the next person. You beat them clean. There's no point. So, to be honest with you, I feel like they did that. So, that way, Brock can have that out. Like, you had to have your boys help you. If it wasn't for your boys, you would have lost. Simple as that. Like, we have seen in the past with Kevin Owens mentioning the very same thing. So, maybe they end up having another match. I'm not sure we will see. Um, either way, man, this was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. All uh, I do feel like Roman still winning was the right decision, man. And I enjoyed that match. I gave it an 8 out of 10. It, it was very good. Very, very good. But Hell in a Cell was my match of the night. So comment down below. Let me know. What was your match of the night? And what do you rank each match on a scale of 1 to 10? And overall, what do you rate this pay-per-view on a scale to 1 to 10? I want your entire list down below in the comment section. I give this pay-per-view a solid, a good solid. I say this was a, it's leaning between a 7 and an 8. Only reason why I say 7, because a lot of the matches for me were like, I gave them 7 out of 10s. They were kind of, you know, enjoyable matches. But the high that I got from the beginning of the show and then the high I got at the end of the show really held it down. And then there was good parts in the middle. So, I'll probably give this show a solid 8 out of 10. It was an 8 out of 10 show. It was it was quite enjoyable. 7, you can give it a 7 or an 8. It's one of those two. Very enjoyable. Um... Best crown jewel we have had so far. There's no denying it. This was really, really good. This was better to me for sure. This was better than Extreme Rules. It definitely was better than Extreme Rules. This was dope. I enjoyed this pay-per-view. So, 7 out of... Uh, I give it a, like an a 8 out of 10. I'm, I'm really fighting between 7 and 8. I'm really in that number. But either a 7 and a half or an 8 out of 10 for me. So, comment down below. Let me know. What you give your ratings on each of the matches and your overall favorite match of the night and also what you rate this show. Appreciate all love and support. Roll to 60K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one.